Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to your latest TW video, episode number 6 of our AW series. We're back for some dynamite as we are on the road to fight for the Fallen or July event. John Moxley's loan deal is expired with New Japan Pro Wrestling. So yeah, we are in a position where we won't be losing him, hopefully, going forward. We lost a bit of money last month, so let's hope we get our pop to a good way where attendances and gate figures can cover any losses we make and we can continue to you know, get more money because if we don't want to bring people in they're under contract from WWE then we're going to have to pay top dollar although at the moment I'm quite happy with what we've got because it's a stacked roster with some people missing out even chances on AEW Dark so yeah we'll crack on uh, like last time we are at the Daily's place, I just feel like EW's home kind of place and yeah we'll keep going there until we're selling it out and then we can move on to bigger and better arenas, just under 5,000 expected here this moment in time. I haven't put a figurehead in just yet, I'm kind of waiting until we get to maybe double figures, so maybe like instead of 4,000, 10,000, that kind of, kind of thing, over the double figures in the tens anyway. So we'll crack on with another episode of Dynamite and hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, glad to see comments are now activated, so I say if you just have any thoughts on how the series is going so far, uh, people you'd like to see a push, any ideas you've got, post them in the comments section and that means I'll get them straight away and get back to them as quickly as possible with the new way the system is. It seems everything's slowly okay with regards to that security breach it was going about. So yeah, if you are uh, any thoughts on this series, any thoughts on TW or wrestling in general, don't hesitate to get involved. We'll try to make this channel more sociable this year. And really get properly interactive going forward. So let's see me bother on. We've got a show to run. Let's get some dynamite. So just imagine boom or the pyro going off, etc. or the whatever usual the EW start is. But yeah, good to see just under four thousand seven hundred, so still a good wee bit to go before we can sell out the daily's place. But we start the show with Cody rushing to the ring and he grabs a mic. He says, Last night was a war. Last night the elite and then a circle went all out, and in the end the extra man of Cash Wheeler was the difference between the two. Now don't worry, this certainly is not over, but for right now there's one thing that I would like to address publicly. Last night I suffered an injury thanks to an act of cowardice, and the man that caused this was the MMA badass of the inner circle, Jake Hager. Now I know Jake is a very, very dangerous man, I don't know how much of a dangerous man you are, your mixed martial arts record speaks for itself, but the fact you went out your way to try and take me out, to try and take an opponent out, just doesn't sit well with me. But I know I should be fully fit with AEW Fight for the Fallen, and if you've got the balls, you'll meet me there. Hell, that's if I don't get a hold of you before then. So Fight for the Fallen is booked in for the third week of July. And yeah, as I say, it was not a minor injury that Cody got, but I just felt like you got you got to take that into slow line and that building up straight into Cody versus Hager, hopefully. So, 87, very, very strong promo. The blood and guts storyline is advanced, because obviously it was built towards blood and guts, but it is still the inner circle versus the elite. Cody was superb working with a script. He had the crowd in the palm of his hand the entire time, and it got that angle, got the crowd hotter, and the show off to a strong start. So, pretty solid there from Cody. Let's get some action on AEW Dynamite. We had a decent match up here, and it was Maxwell Jacob Friedman MGF defeating L. Lindemann in 750 with a Swanton Bomb. Just a 58 rating here, a 43 for L. Lindemann and a 61 for MGF. Great chemistry between the two of them, and it showed in our performances, but just keeping MGF strong, man. Just booking him along fairly strong. And the only negative here would be the holding back of both. Gentlemen. Promo now from MGF with Wardlow alongside. Hey Jungle Boy, you're a loser. You see, this is just another loser I've faced, just like you. And hey, speaking of losers, what about that big loser that walks around with you? The guy who thinks he's a freaking dinosaur. The fact of the matter is, try anything with me, Luchasaurus, and Wardlow will make your kind extinct again. So Jurassic Express, remember one thing I'm better than you, and you know it. So just continue to build up this feud between MGF, Jungle Boy, with Wardlow, and of course Luchasaurus built in. You can see here, storyline advances, a 64 is okay, 
Uh, both guys working well and the crowd got hotter again. So, so far a strong start to Dynamite. We then see a limo pull up and, and JR saying this. Oh god, it's Sammy Guevara. And behind him, Jake Hager, Santana Ortiz, Chris Jericho. And the newest member of the inner circle, Cash Wheeler, have arrived at the building. So that is a 51. We then moved into a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Impact defeated Coke Cabana in 6.32 with a shooting star sent on. A very, very solid 77 here. Uh, a 63 from Cole and a 79 from Pack. So really, really happy with that one. I think we made this not just a regular match. Uh, yeah, just a lot of positives here. Only real negatives. It was only a six minute match. And the declining physical ability of Cole Cabana. Why look at this. Hot off an impressive victory against Nick Jackson at Blood and Guts. And here I am, nowhere near a title opportunity, and stuck facing losers and embarrassments like Colt Cabana. This is a travesty. Tonight should not have been Sean Spears versus John Moxley. It should have been Pac versus Moxley. This should be the goddamn Pac show. So he's obviously frustrated. He's getting all these big wins, and he's facing losers. And his opinion on Dynamite. So that's an 84 for the Pac promo. Next up, a terrible wrestling match with non-existent crowd heat. And we had Diona Peruzzo make her debut to defeat B Priestley in 7.42 by pinfall. Just a 28 here, so we are going to have to build up a lot of the women on dark before we bring up the dynamite. But still, we just need to try and get the crowd back here. Diona with a 28, B Priestley with a 35. The clean cut gimmick of the Virtuosa got uh, an initial rating of great, which is good to see. She was off her game, which is poor. Um, crowd killed a little. And they were turned off by having a match outside the pre-show if they didn't have any investment in. So maybe I should have hyped her up a bit more, but the AEW Women's Division and TW needs a bit of work. A lot more. It doesn't need work in real life, but a lot more work in, in the game. So we'll get to that. During the match-up, we, during the Viewing a Perusal match, we also had Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, at the commentary desk. She gave Starbucks Tony some abuse, but she also noted it was nice to see Diona Peruzzo in AEW because of friends. She said she'll do well, but she she should came to AEW sooner. She also commented that uh, yeah, she has a mean-looking armbar, many of them, and she could be someone to watch within the AEW women's division. So just really a summary of uh, Brett being on commentary at the guest uh, guest commentary booth, and yeah, it's just a 26 rating here, rating here even sorry. So next up we are with Jim Ross who's going to give us a little bit of a rundown of what is coming up. He says, well ladies and gentlemen, we're receiving word that a few matches have been made official for AEW Fight for the Fallen. Coming up a few weeks on Saturday, it's been confirmed that the Jurassic Express, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus will take on Maxwell Jacob Friedman and Wardlaw. And also in tag team action, we will see the titles on the line as the Lucha Bros get their opportunity against Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. So two matches have been made official towards that card. I know EW do this a lot, they start bigging things up, uh, matches that are going to come in the future during the show, so I want to bring that in. Obviously there's some matches they obviously announced in social media, the casino ladder match, but uh, obviously we can't do that in TW, so yeah, we'll go with this. Next up we had a decent matchup, and it was the debut in EW in the ring of Cash Wheeler. He defeated Seema in 10 at 22 with a full Nelson slam. A 69 rating here, a 65 for Shima, a 62 for Cash Wheeler as we actually get him wins in AEW. It was a wild brawl because I needed one of the matches. Overall really good and yeah, good start to life as a singles wrestler as well in AEW. So Chris Jericho takes a mic with the inner circle all behind him. He says, you see, this guy, Cash Wheeler, is an excellent professional wrestler and is the sixth member of the inner circle. Elite, this man is a top guy and the inner circle is full of top guys. So a natural fit, would you say? Elite, it's time to realise no matter what combination of guys you have, you'll never touch the GOAT stable in professional wrestling. Now Cody, you want a piece of Hager. I'd be worried about that, because you're not even on Hager's level. And this man will just hurt you even more than he has already. But I notice no one's calling out Le Champion Chris Jericho. Because no member of the elite can even get close to me. Omega, beat him. Hangman Page, beat him. 
And Cody, let's be honest, I beat you countless times back in the day. Just to set, except Le Champion is even eliter than the elite. So look at Jericho be calling out here. He's beat Page. He's beat Omega. He's beat Cody. Who's he going to face? So that's going to be an interesting one there. A 52 rating here. This was basically Jericho or was rated on entertainment and the rest were rated on overness. So maybe should get a bit higher. But Jericho benefits from his Le Champion catchphrase. We'll just say that. And we head on to the next match. But next up, making their AW in ring debuts, Alex Shelley, Chris Sabin, the motorcycle machine gun. So we kind of hate package saying they're coming up next. And that's a 34. Their matchup had decent wrestling but didn't have a lot of heat as the guns beat the Butcher in the Blade in 1028 when Shelley defeated the Blade with an underarm snap STO. During the matchup, we had the Bunny accidentally hit the Blade. So the Butcher was a weak link here. Sabin and Shelley with ratings up in the high 50s and the 60s. The Blade with 51. The Butcher had a terrible time of it, a 34 and off his game. A 50, it's not too bad. The crowd is still a bit low. That women's match has really cost us in that regard. Hopefully, we can pick them up with the next contest. And we did a little. It was about, we had some good wrestling and decent reaction from the crowd and it was the team of Adam Page and Kenny Omega who defeated the Hybrid 2, of course that is Jack Evans and Helico in 12.28 when Hangman Page defeated Jack Evans with the Adams Apple. In terms of in-ring work, Kenny Omega was head and shoulders above the rest and, and Helico was the weak link, but we'll get him there, these kind of matches will help him. A 74 is pretty good there, Kenny Omega benefiting from the groundswell of public support, an 81 there. The quicker we can come back into singles action the better, and this match got the crowd buzzing as well. And your main event, and about to have great heat and good wrestling, John Moxley drew with Sean Spears in 12.57 with a double disqualification because we had Brodie Lee run in and attack both causing a double DQ. Now it seems here Spears isn't quite pulling the ratings he was in the 2016 mod which is noticeable because he was going to be the guy that always planned to get the first title shot but yeah 69 here and yeah I think we're going to lose pop here there's, unless the co-main can save us but as I say yeah it's been an okay show it's got the crowd hotter and we have a one final segment and it is with the exalted one Brody Lee both John Moxley and Sean Spears have been taken out by Mr. Brody Lee with his Discus Lariat, even though I've put Discus Lariat, uh, and then he summons the Dark Order Lackeys to continue the beatdown on the champion and challengers, or challenger, while he grabs a mic. This has been a complete mockery. I gave these both gentlemen the chance to fight it out at Blood and Guts and they decided to waste my time by not even having the match take place. I've decided that now is the time for the Dark Order to strike. By defeating both these idiots and claiming that championship, I'll bring glory and success to the Dark Order and this will filter down so that those who join will get enlightenment and great success also. The Dark Order will thrive. When Uno and Grayson are ready, they will mark the tag division and we will all thrive. Wake up. I did watch a wee bit of his promo with Tony Schiavotti the other week though, which would have been today. A uh, week by the time you see this. So yeah, just Brody Lee boosting up the Dark Order and I, um, I think we can know where this one's going in terms of a match at Fight for the Fallen but 64 is pretty decent, I think we're going to lose pop here but it's all part of the run. No, we're not actually, we gained a 77 so I believe, all going well, that Pack and Coke, I, I, the thing I need to adjust to here is different mods I'm using and different products are looking are giving me different results here. So the main thing is we gain pop and we can have a weaker end to the show. But uh, yeah, actually that's pretty decent. I'm happy with that. A lot of segments on it. Pop's been gained. Uh, and we've got a good few programmes going forward. As I say, I have pretty much the match card written out for what we're going to have. That fight for the fallen. And yeah, I just need to get there. So at the moment I have a card of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 matches that we've got to work towards in the next two weeks. So we'll finish it off and then we'll jump back into the home screen. 
also documenting what happened on AEW Dark, because obviously people will be coming through the system there. I had MGF with a win over T Hawk and another promo for him. Jurassic Express gave Butcher and the Blade two defeats in the same night. Promo packages for the likes of Diona Peruzzo, Private Party, and Britt Baker. I had Wardlow defeat Sonny Kiss in our opening contest with the Bunny defeat Yuka Sakazaki. I feel like the likes of Yuka, Imei Sakura are all going to lose a lot more on the basis it's going to take them far much to get over in the US I'd maybe just utilise them to put people up or put people over anyway so Jake Roberts likes L. Lindemann and as your drug tests we get a 1.46 not too bad and um, yeah overall AW Dark last week that episode got just under 300,000 viewers so overall not too bad not too bad at all I think we're certainly progressing at an okay rate. If I just check show history. So we get a, a 1.46 and last week a 1.45, 139. So we're certainly growing in terms of how many people are watching, that's good to see. And obviously good bit of more, more so on attendance than anything else I suppose for the pay-per-view, but yeah, we just need to make sure. We don't run out of money within two years. And hopefully we get to a stage where the gate receipts all sort us out. And obviously if it comes to worse, we can expand um, the likes of the pay-per-view system so we can get that broadcast. But I said I've bothered on a mo uh, enough even. I muddled my word words a few times. That's only 17 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and book next week's show. So thanks very much for watching. Much appreciated to say. Any thoughts on the series and wrestling in general, leave a wee comment. It's much appreciated. I will get back to you. Any thumbs up or deeply appreciated to try and get TW out there a bit more. And if you are new to the channel and you do like what you see, we get plenty of videos at the moment while we're in lockdown, still daily. Um, it'll be either these videos or the WWF 1983. And uh, yeah, I should be on Twitch every so often. Um, I will be at the time of this video being recorded. Hopefully I've not fell out with TW by then. But yeah, cheers for watching, much appreciated. Remember, if you do want to get any mods or anything, Definitely check out TWDB.com, Gaydog Software Forums, and if you're looking for any more visual stuff, I'd definitely check out the Fantasy Booker subreddit. So most people will pop their stuff on there, so it's a good chance to see so much stuff plus other stuff. And for written stuff, and of course the new patches when they come out every time, Gaydog Software Forums for written. But just watching, much appreciated, stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you next week for some more Dynamite.